Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Karen Anderson, and I'm Director of Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss. And we are very, very pleased to be partnering with Robert Palmquist at Auditory Sciences to bring you information about the Interact Streamer Speech-to-Text Automated Captioning Software. So let's go ahead and get started. Get my slide moved to next here. There we go. As you probably know and realize, most of our students who are deaf or hard of hearing are now fully included in the general ed settings where they spend most of their time in a regular classroom. Unfortunately, hearing devices, even the most expensive hearing devices, do not restore normal hearing. Whether they're the latest in digital hearing aid technology or our FM or DM uh, hearing assistance technology devices, they don't restore all of the normal hearing range to our students with hearing loss. So part of everything that the teacher says is likely to be missed by our students, especially if the conditions aren't just right, meaning the teacher is at a distance, um, there's background noise, and the FM or the DM system isn't being used, if there's new vocabulary, there's lots of reasons why our students have to really expend more energy to listen, to be able to catch those words that the teacher is saying. And that leaves them with fewer cognitive resources to truly understand what was said and then fewer yet for those students to remember what was said. And as we know, as kids move through the grades, there are increasing ex expectations for them to already know a lot of vocabulary and to learn vocabulary at a faster rate. And it is not surprising that our students who are hard of hearing especially have a really hard time keeping pace with these vocab vocabulary demands as they enter late elementary and certainly into secondary school. So it's very common for us to see our students who are hard of hearing perform pretty well in kindergarten and first grade and maybe into second grade. But as the excuse me, expectations change from learning to read to reading to learn and those vocabulary expectations increase, it's not unusual for an academic gap to start to appear in late elementary and then go into secondary school simply because of these access issues. I wanted to share a story with you. And what you'll see is a visual representation of a common children's story. And you'll see that parts of the words are missing and they are, um, squished together, and this is to represent what it's like to listen with a 25 decibel hearing loss. Most of our students who are hard of hearing have, and deaf, have hearing losses that are much, much greater than this. But if you have a student who is hard of hearing with a mild loss through up to a 70 or even maybe a 75 decibel hearing loss, it's possible that their hearing aids will allow them to hear at about a 25 or maybe even 20 decibel level. Granted, our children with typical hearing hear between minus 10 and plus 10 decibels. So 25 dB, as you will see, does create some listening problems. So I'm going to go ahead and let you see this line of the story. Let's see. There we go. And I'll say it in, uh, I'll, I'll read it to you. Once upon a time, a city mouse went to visit a country mouse. The country mouse lived in a field. He was glad to see his city friend. 
the two mice ran about the field and played until noon. So you can see even with a 25 decibel hearing loss that there are parts of speech that are very easy to miss and the unemphasized words that we use in our when we speak English also are more difficult to hear even when you have a relatively small amount of hearing loss. So Interact Streamer is a classroom accommodation and the Americans with Disabilities Act in the United States specifies that schools must ensure that the communication of students with hearing loss is as effective as it is for their peers and it afford, thus affording them an equal opportunity to reach the same level of achievement as that provided to others. So I've already made it clear that the hearing devices we have don't quite level that playing field. They go a long way and using an FM or a DM system consistently in the classroom certainly will ease a lot of the listening issues for our students. But they are still in the situation where new vocabulary and just part of classroom communication every day, day in and day out is missed. So our students often need to look beyond just hearing devices if they're hard of hearing in terms of getting that full access to classroom communication to level that playing field so that they can truly receive that or reach that same level of achievement that the other students have. And the ADA specifies that the way we're supposed to level this playing field is through the provision of auxiliary aids and services. So as I said, FMDM devices are, you know, can be considered an auxiliary aid, as can sign language interpreters. That would be an auxiliary service. But captioning is also considered an auxiliary aid that a student can use to level the playing field. So Interact Streamer can be used as a classroom accommodation. It can be a primary accommodation, accommodation, and in that case, the student would mainly be watching the captioning. So they're watching the media device they have, whether it's an iPad or a Chromebook or a laptop computer or even their iPhone or their smartphone. They would be watching that captioning all the time while that teacher was communicating. That would be a primary accommodation. Most of the time, streamer captioning is used as a secondary accommodation, meaning it is mainly used by students who are hard of hearing, they're using their hearing devices, they have pretty decent language ability, they typically have at least a fifth or sixth grade reading ability, and they're watching that teacher in the classroom and they're listening to her, probably speech reading her as she's talking, but Every time they miss a word, they then would glance down and look at the captioning, just as you can see it coming in here below the, the slides. So most of the time, again, streamer is used as this secondary accommodation that is also important in addition to the hearing assistance technology, and together they help level that communication playing field in the classroom. Using Streamer can also facilitate transition. And as we know, if anyone who works in special education, transition services are required for students who have IEPs starting no later than age 14. And for the population of persons who are deaf or hard of hearing, nationally, only 48 of them, 48% oh, of them are employed or they're underemployed. And with every, every year of higher education, the employment rates increase. So we certainly want to, to produce young people who are able to go into higher education, get a good educational training, and then be part of the tax-paying citizens that we all are. 
And the key to that is access to education. So the transition plan should include how to help that student prepare for a post-secondary program or an employment and to increase that student's understanding of which accommodations they require to function and then to provide them with different examples in how to use accommodations to assist their comprehension or their communication and then how to request these appropriate accommodations. So a trial with Streamer can further the student's transition goals and help them explore for themselves if captioning is an important part of what they might be requesting once they reach higher ed. Or we often find that students who are in advanced placement classes, they just can't keep up with that pace of discussion and that pace of learning. There's just too much new content. And they often require captioning, again, just to be able to access the information and level the playing field. So today's webinar here is going to answer your questions. It's going to allow you to experience Streamer, and you're already doing so. As you can see, as I'm presenting this information, you're seeing the captioning right on the screen. And as Rob presents more information about Interact Streamer and how it works, you'll begin to fee get a feel for whether it could be suitable for the student or students you have in mind. We're certainly going to let you know how you can do a trial period. And we are very much interested in having you do a trial period first. We really um, would rather not have people say, hey, this is great, we're just going to buy the, the year's subscription. We really want you to give it a try because every student is different. And as you can imagine, the most success is found when students are involved in this decision making and they're excited to try this new technology and see how it works for them. More and more, our kids are, are very technologically savvy. And so Interact's captioning is, streamer captioning, is a pretty cool app to use. And some of our kids can get very, very excited about it. But just like using an FM or a DM system, the classroom teacher must use a microphone. Only the, the words or the speech that goes through a microphone will appear in the captioning. So the student will still need to provide that teacher with a, a microphone transmitter that she will need to be using so that the captioning will be produced. And we often have students who are, are shy about using that or sharing that FM or that microphone with the teacher. So there's a lot of parallels in terms of getting students to accept uh, captioning at, in terms of uh, you know, using that microphone system. We also have uh, situations where we can use a second microphone that can be passed to peers or in a team teaching situation. So it's not only captioning of just the teacher's voice. So I'll let Rob explain all of that more to you. And Rob, take it away. Tell us more about Interact Streamer, where it came from, and um, just give us the details here. And everybody, I'm going to come back at the end and show you the website and where you can get more information about going forward. So uh, take it away, Rob. Thanks, Karen. Let me uh, turn on my captioning system so you can see how Streamer is working. And what I'm going to do is uh, step you through some of the features of Streamer and show you how it's used in the classroom, kind of take you through the day in the life of a student and how they would be using this particular system as they are uh, captioning the classes, as they're attending their classroom. Um, jumping back into the slides just real briefly here, I do like spending just a quick moment at the beginning of each presentation to point out that this was funded largely in part by the U.S. Marine Corps. So I do like giving them credit uh, for what they accomplished here. And initially they came to us asking us to develop language translation systems. And I'll demonstrate that for you in, in a few moments here. 
as a result of the success of uh, that particular effort, then they came back to us and said, can you develop a captioning system for our wounded warriors? Now, certainly Marines in theater operations are provided with hearing protection, but the reality is in that type of situation, if they're wearing that hearing protection, they lose what they call situational awareness. They can't hear footsteps approaching from behind them. So typically the Marine does not wear that uh, particular hearing protection and a 10 second blast of machine gun fire that happens right next to their ear results in a lifetime of permanent hearing loss. So we were certainly honored to be asked by the Marine Corps to develop this system. And again, I like uh, spending just a little bit of time giving them credit uh, for indeed funding a lot of this particular effort. Um, another question that's coming up more frequently now is the issue of student data privacy. And because of our heritage of working with the Marine Corps, uh, we are very much a secure system. And so that was designed into the system from day one. This is not an afterthought where we came along later on and said, oh, now we need to be secure. So we are very much compliant with student data privacy requirements. And we're happy to sign any documents, anything like that that your particular uh, school district has put in place to ensure those data privacy requirements. Lots of folks have uh, spent some time uh, reviewing the software, and uh, we certainly appreciate them doing that as well. Um, this is particularly just one of uh, the retail solution providers. These are the folks that do all the evaluation and testing for retailers, so Target and Best Buy, Walmart, places like this. And they evaluated the products and came back and said, yes, uh, Speech Gears is the best. Uh, we also recently uh, received an award as the best uh, education technology product. That's a new product out there. So uh, we kind of like that. So uh, certainly it's nice um, having those groups spend the time to review our systems and to get back to us with that feedback. The huge partner that we have, though, is you. Um, we definitely take the feedback quite seriously you as educators coming back to us and saying what you would like to see in a system. And so I do want to thank you for all your ideas and the feedback that keeps coming back. So for this particular school year, the number one request we had was a system that runs on iPads and Chromebooks. I guess that's two requests. Um, but uh, Streamer does indeed run on both those platforms, as, long, as well as MacBooks and laptops and other devices. And so now, yes, you can run Streamer and do this captioning directly on that $49 Chromebook or the iPad or your Android phone, um, iPhone, any device like that that can connect to the Internet now has the ability to be able to run this captioning software. Another big issue that came back from our previous systems was the installs and updates. So it's very common for educators to not be given the keys to the system. So you have to go to somebody in your information technology group and have them do the install for you. And that takes time and all the hassles. And so what we did is we made it very easy and uh, uh, as easy as possible. There are no installs and there are no updates. All you do is go to the website. So you no longer need to go through that particular hassle. In the past, we just had a headset option and a uh, handheld microphone. And so we did add a lapel mic. Uh, that was very much a request that we had, so that's a, an option that we have. Um, additional languages, there's always more languages that people are requesting, so thank you for giving us that feedback. And we did indeed add a lot of additional languages. And recently, um, in the last oh, three, four months, we spent quite a bit of time working with the manufacturers of existing FM systems. And so to ensure the capability or the compatibility of streamer with those existing systems is something that uh, we have indeed done. Um, and uh, so that's a, a very nice feature that we have is that you can integrate streamer now with, for example, your own act uh, system. Um, so uh, yeah, lots of nice features coming across there. So again, let me show you a little bit about streamer itself. What you can see is that it's captioning everything that I'm saying in real time. There is no person in the background here typing away for some third party uh, firm that's listening in on the conversation generating this transcript. This is all done automatically. So you can use this system anytime, anywhere that you have uh, connection to the internet. 
There is no concept here of having to schedule a meeting in advance or schedule a person to be available. Uh, there's no concept here of a per minute fee or a per hour fee or anything like that. When you subscribe to the system, you can use it as often as you like, anytime you like, and there are no additional uh, per usage fees or anything like that. So in the far left corner, it's kind of scrolled by, but what you would see is the name of the person who is speaking. And so if I scroll up here real quick, you can Hi, see my name there, R. Palmquist. And add a little and comment here. There we go, and uh, Karen jumped in there. And so yes, we can have multiple people speaking simultaneously, and the student is going to see who said what. That can be very important when you're in team teaching type situations to know who is saying what at what given time. And so a very nice feature. Um, over on the far right, you have columns here that show everybody that's currently in the virtual room. And that's kind of nice to know who is there. I can also click on names. I can send a private message. So if you are an educator and you have a student that wasn't paying attention, um, you could click on that particular name of the student and say, and send them a private message. And so that's going to appear on their screen and not on the other students. So kind of a nice way to be able to do all that. Let me step into some of the additional features here. We'll go through the PowerPoint slide. So again, there is no install whatsoever. All you do is go to the website and log in using your account information. And in a moment here, I'll show you how you can create a shortcut. So all the student does is double click on that and they're set. All you do then is click to start the captioning. And so you can see that I've done that. My microphone is green in that bottom left corner. And with that, I get real-time contextual-based captioning. So as Karen and I have been speaking here, you've probably seen the dynamic aspect of us being able to dynamically um, correct the uh, particular speech as it's coming across. So we're using both a backwards-looking and a forward-looking uh, tools in order to better uh, transcribe what's being said. And you can see the accuracy here is quite good. I'm just speaking quite normally. And as I'm talking, it's uh, correcting, auto-correcting everything that I'm saying as I'm going. That's a nice feature to have. It is complete punctuation. And so the punctuation comes in last. So we're doing all this auto-correction. And let me scroll back to the larger screen here. And you can see the punctuation coming in at, at the end of this. But when the student generates that transcript and saves it as a Microsoft Word doc or a Google doc, something like that, it is going to be fully punctuated. This is not just one long line of, uh, of uh, words, uh, you know, some run-on sentence or something like that. Okay, identify the person that's speaking, support of multiple speakers. Certainly, as Karen showed, we can do that. So if you're in a team teaching situation or if you have a group of students sitting around a table, we can support all those multiple speakers. Um, I can send and attach documents as well. I guess I won't show that to you right now, um, but I just drag and drop. So I drag a document into the uh, field, and with that, the student then is going to receive that particular document, or as I mentioned earlier, the uh, private notes. Some other features here I'm going to kind of skip over, uh, but certainly they're all here. But I do want to show you downloading of transcripts. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, so what I have here is the streamer interface. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And if I click on the room settings, what I can do is then download the transcript. I'll do that right now. When I do that, it's going to ask me the time frame and what format I want to save it in. So I could save it, for example, in a Word doc or a text format. I'll save it in a Word document right now. And when I do that, it saved the transcript down here in this uh, particular folder that I've designated. But you can set up your system so that it will save it in whatever folder you want. So if you're in math class, you're going to save it in math class or, or art or English or something like that. And with that, we do have a complete transcript of everything that's been said. It will take a moment here for that to open. It actually it opened pretty quick. But you can see what we have here then is a fully punctuated um, transcript of everything that's being said. I'm going to close that out there real quick because it's over, uh, overlapping on top of the captioning. 
But it's that simple to be able to save the captioning of what's being said in the classroom. Pretty nice feature to be able to do that. Jump back into the PowerPoint slides here. Uh, continuous voice synthesis. And so if you have a student who is nonverbal, whatever they type into the system is going to be spoken out loud so other students can hear that. So let's talk a little bit about what you get with your subscription. What you get with each subscription is a private and secure streamer room and an admin user account. You can create as many student accounts as you want, and so you're encouraged to do that. Um, and again, as many as you want, unlimited in number, uh, the accounts are free. What you're getting with your subscription is that admin account that you're going to use to manage your system and your private and secure locked streamer room that you'll use for the captioning. You alone have the key to your room. You decide who can enter the room, who knows it exists, and you control what they can do within that room. So if you want to give a student permission to download the transcript, great. If you'd rather that they not have that ability, you can remove that as well. All sorts of different permissions that you can give to a particular student who's using the room. Again, you control that. You as an educator have control over that. Each room can be used for captioning or translating a single conversation. And so if you have two conversations happening in two separate rooms at the same time, then you would need two subscriptions in order to support that. But again, that room can be used with as many uh, accounts as you want. So if you have captions uh, occurring simultaneously in separate classrooms, then you'll need a separate uh, subscription for each one. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if it doesn't. Um, again, the system um, runs on any device that can connect to the internet. So this could be uh, an iPad, a Chromebook, an Android phone, a laptop, um, any sort of tablet, um, anything that can connect to the internet um, that's going to be able to uh, access the streamer website, you're going to be able to use that. We do want the teacher to wear a microphone. And so ideally, this is um, a headset. It could be a lapel mic, though that's that's absolutely fine, depending a little bit on the background noise. Uh, but there is no concept here of the student just having the microphone on their desk and remotely understanding what the teacher is saying. There's just way too much background noise in that classroom to support that type of situation. So we do want the teacher to be wearing some sort of microphone, and typically that's going to be a wireless microphone. On that device, you're going to be running the Chrome browser, and that's free. And so that's what you're going to be using in order to generate the uh, particular captioning. All right, so lots going on there. Oh, let me jump back. I jumped over that one a little too fast, because this is kind of an important slide. Um, this is an example of a student using Streamer. In this particular case, that's a Microsoft uh, Surface Pro on their desk. But the key thing to note here is that the student doesn't look any different than any other student in that class. They completely fit in with their peers. There's no extra stuff ha happening on this particular desk. All they're doing is wirelessly connected um, into the streamer website and they're viewing the captioning that's being generated. That can be extremely important to some students, that they not look different, that they just fit in with the rest of their peers and Streamer allows them to do that. So it's a very nice approach to uh, being able to achieve that. In addition to, uh, now let me just step through this, I guess, real quick. So the day in the life of a student, they carry whatever device that they're using into the room, probably along with the wireless mic. And this may be an existing wireless FM system that they've already been previously using. They're going to go to the website, and they do either open the, uh, a browser to do that, or they will just double-click on the desktop shortcut. They're going to view the captioning, add notes during the lecture wherever they're desired, save the transcript if you allow them to do that, clear the transcript, and then go to the next class. Pretty simple stuff to do. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, so we can support multiple students, uh, multiple teachers in a classroom. Um, if you have 10 students that would like to see the captioning in that particular classroom, not a problem. They can all share that single streamer subscription, and they'll all be able to view the captioning. Further, what we can do is languages. And uh, so if, for example, you have 
students that uh, would prefer the lecture to be in different languages, we can support that as well, again, with a single subscription. So if you had one student who was hard of hearing, another one that spoke Spanish, um, another one Korean, another one Hindi that are all in this classroom, as you are saying something in English, each of those four students is going to see, and in the case of the foreign languages here, what you're saying in their preferred language. So when you say something like hello, that's going to be repeated to each of those three students, Spanish, Korean, and Hindi, in their respective languages. They'll hear it out loud using an earbud or something like that. And when they respond in their native language, you're going to be able to see and hear it in English. So in addition to supporting students that are deaf or hard of hearing and nonverbal, we can also support students who uh, English is their second language. And so if you have that situation in your classroom, let us know and we can step you through and show you how that works. All right, I'm gonna jump through a little bit more here. Um, certainly Streamer can be used in other settings. And so in addition to the classroom, if you have an all school assembly, or let's say you have 500 students in a gymnasium and 22 of those students would like to view the captioning of what's being said during that presentation, you can use Streamer to easily support that. All 22 of those students are going to be able to log in using their personal device, be it an iPhone or an Android phone or an iPad or a Chromebook, whatever it might be, and they're going to be able to view the captioning. Same thing with morning announcements. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a surprise, but now we've taken those 22 students, and instead of being in that gymnasium, now they're each in their separate classroom, so 22 classrooms throughout your campus. But they're going to be able to share that same streamer account and be able to view the morning announcements the same way that they would do in the gymnasium. Just now they're in different locations. And so we can, in addition to having a student be in the campus, they could be at home. And so if you have a homebound student or somebody who's in a hospital, whatever it might be, you can provide captioning to that student even though they're in that remote location. And the reason is because streamer is web-based. So anywhere that you can connect to the internet, you're able to view that captioning and do so in your language of choice. A lot's going on here in terms of being able to use the system and the functionality. Let's talk real quick about microphone systems. We've mentioned it's important that the teacher be wearing a microphone. There's no concept of here of the microphone just being placed on the student's desk. We want that microphone close to the mouth of the person who is speaking. And by close, ideally, that means one to eight inches away, something like that. So you can use an existing FM system. And so we have gone through uh, working with the vendors to make sure that compatibility exists. Uh, certainly, if you talk to your audiologist, they're going to be able to uh, support you in integrating Streamer into that system. If there's any questions, let us know, and we're happy to work with you on doing that. Uh, one suggestion is that we want to minimize the number of, of adapters that you're using. So it's best to get the right cable versus a cable plus an adapter. That sounds um, you know, a little confusing there, um, but we can point you to getting the right cable for your particular situation. The fewer the parts there are, the less there is chance of one getting lost, and the better um, that you're going to have for an audio connection. Um, Certainly, there's lots of information on this, uh, various quick tip videos uh, that are out there. Um, you can go to YouTube and just search for them using real-time captioning with Interact Streamer. And one such video does go over this approach of how do you uh, integrate Streamer with an existing uh, FM system. I'm going to show you that here real quick if this comes up here while I take a quick break and get a drink of water. So I hope you can hear this. I'll close it off. I'm back. Thanks for letting me get that quick drink of water. 
I'm uh, fighting a bit of a cold here, so that certainly helps uh, my voice uh, stay intact as we're chatting here. Um, but that gives you a little bit of an idea. And again, we'll give you links here on uh, how to uh, uh, view those uh, um, uh, view those quick tips uh, at the end of this presentation. If you're going to purchase a wireless microphone system from us, uh, that's great. Uh, we're certainly happy to uh, uh, help you out with that process. Um, and we do offer two systems. The first one is the Nano system that is $499. And this is a very small USB thumb drive. You can see the receiver there, kind of that dot on your screen. Uh, but that's just a USB thumb drive. And that's what will plug into the student's computer. The dual system, a little bit bigger here, the receiver is about the size of a business card. It's kind of hard to get reference there, but that's roughly two inches by three inches. So it's still fairly small in size. And with these systems, you have your choice of three different options of microphones, a headset, a handheld, or a lapel. And all those are wireless, of course. Um, and so with the nano system, what you have is a single microphone input. So you have your choice of connecting a headset, a handheld, or a lapel mic. You have a single audio output, and that's going to connect to the computer, and that's what you're going to use for the captioning. So if you have a student that wants the easiest to use microphone possible and the smallest size, which again is just a USB thumb drive, this is the one to get. Very small in size. It's going to blend in with the rest of the students. There's nothing that makes uh, them stand out or anything like that. Again, very small in size, um, and it's going to blend in just fine. The dual receiver has two microphone inputs. So now you can have your choice of any combination of a headset, a handheld, or a lapel. So in this particular scenario, perhaps you have a teacher wearing a lapel mic and a group of students that have a pass-around handheld mic. Um, you can have your choice of any two of those microphones, and you have two audio outputs, one that's going to connect to the computer and a second that could be used to connect to a student's hearing aid or cochlear implant. Uh, we do charge $100 more for this one, and why? Because we're including an additional microphone with that. Um, so again, you get um, uh, three microphones with this particular uh, kit, the headset lapel and the handheld. And if you want, you can purchase additional microphones for $99 each. So those are just two options that you can use for uh, your particular student's needs. And I guess I should mention this one as well. With the dual system, we also have the ability to mount that to the back of an iPhone or an Android phone. So it becomes a very nice portable solution that they can use anywhere at any time. So lots of different features built into those microphone systems. But again, if you already have an existing wireless FM system, that's probably where you want to start, is let's take a look at using that existing system. The total cost of your system then, for the software itself, for the first year, you're going to pay $795. And that's an unlimited use subscription to a single streamer room. You're going to be able to use that as often as you want, um, Any time that you want, there again, no concept here of per minute fees or per usage fees or reaching a daily cap or a monthly cap or anything like that. Over $66 a month, you're going to get that for the first year. After that first year, then the price drops to $199 per year. So it's a little less than $17 per month. The pricing is going to change, and that's going to change fairly soon, and it's going to increase. Uh, but for anybody that starts a trial now, certainly we're going to honor this pricing for you. So again, $795 will get you the first year, and thereafter it will be $199 per year. Um, with the microphone, if you need to purchase one, then you're going to spend somewhere between five to $600. And for additional microphones, if you want, um, $99 each. Or if you purchase four, you get the fifth one free. So it comes out to about $79 each. Also, as part of your system, you're going to need a media device to run the software. And so that could be a $49 um, Amazon Fire. Um, actually, they were $29 recently, so Amazon keeps uh, giving deals on those. Uh, to something like a, a Microsoft Surface Pro for $900. Um, take your pick. Whatever you're using in your school as that media device, be it a Chromebook or an iPad or whatever it might be, we're absolutely fine with your using that. 
We do not care at all about the CPU that's in it or the amount of RAM or the disk space or anything like that. All we care about is that it be able to run the Chrome browser and be able to connect to the internet in some fashion. That's it. And so very uh, relaxed in terms of the uh, requirements that are needed. As Karen mentioned earlier, we really do want you to sign up for a trial. Um, anybody that claims they have the best solution for every student out there, well, they don't know what they're saying. Um, each student's use, uh, excuse me, each student's needs are unique and each situation is unique. And so we certainly encourage you to do a trial. It's a great way to start. Uh, the cost for doing that trial is $99 plus if you opt to uh, have us send you a microphone, you're going to pay a return deposit on that microphone. Sorry to have to charge you that return deposit, but uh, we had trouble getting people to send things back. And so that's why we do uh, also ask for that return deposit if you decide to add a microphone to your trial. With that, you get the absolute full version of Interact Streamer. It's fairly common these days for software companies to send you some product that is so limited just to get you hooked on it, and then you have to start adding all these additional features to it. And it ends up, you know, increasing the cost substantially um, in order to do what you actually want it to do. No concept of that here. You get the full version of Interact Streamer. You can run that trial on as many computers as you like, and we encourage you to do that. Share it with the parents, with the student, with other teachers, um, anybody and everybody. We're absolutely happy for you to run that trial on multiple devices and have multiple people give it a shot. Um, to sign up for a trial, we're going to show you that in a minute, take you over to the uh, web page and uh, how to uh, sign up for that uh, particular trial. Um, but what I'd like to do is have you give it a try for yourself. So you can do this for free. Um, you can do it right now if you want, but everybody's going to be doing it at the same time or sometime later this evening. All you're going to do is open up a Chrome browser on whatever device you have and go to the website there. And the account that we're giving you is thanks for being part of this webinar. is called Teacher and the password you can see there. And so when you go to the website, log in using that account, Again, teacher, and the password is shown. And you're going to click on the room called Demo for Schools. And when you do that, you can try Streamer immediately right now for free. Um, do that as often as you want. Um, play with that. Um, just click on the microphone icon and start talking. Uh, we've also set up a, a Spanish account for you as well. And so if you would like to see how Streamer can translate languages, go ahead and uh, sign on on a second computer using uh, the account teacher-spanish, and what you'll see is everything that you're saying on the first computer in English is going to be translated into Spanish, and whatever you say in Spanish on that second computer is going to be automatically translated into English. So lots of different things, and again, completely free. Do this anytime that you want, um, but the key point there, you notice that I underlined that, this is not a room that you'll want to use to caption a classroom because everybody that's listening to this webinar or viewing it on a recording is going to have access to that same streamer room. With your trial, you get a private secure room that only you have access to. So that way we're ensuring the student's data privacy rights. In this particular case, this is a room that everybody, uh, we're advertising this particular account and login information. And so it's a great room to play with it, to give it a try, to make sure your wireless FM system is working with Streamer, whatever you want to do with this. Uh, but just realize that uh, other people can jump in at any time and view what's happening in that particular room. All right. Lots of other features that uh, are out there that we haven't covered. Um, if you go to YouTube and do a search for Interact Streamer, you're going to see a lot of really nice videos that Mike has put together for you. Uh, these are short uh, videos, um, and you'll be able to view those uh, very quickly. Um, 30 seconds or less, uh, things like creating a desktop shortcut. So now the student just clicks on that, and they're automatically logged into their room. Lots of features built into there, and uh, of course, uh, the streamer quick start guy. What I'm going to do is turn it back over to Karen here and have her step you through the uh, website and what you can do in order to sign up for a trial. Let me get this uh, screen set right here so you can see the uh, captioning as well. 
Thanks, Rob. You always do a nice job of reviewing how how we can uh, <laughs> of how Interact Streamer works and how we can use it in the different options. It's almost mind-boggling once you understand how easy it is to think, wow, I can use it this way and I can use it that way and he can use it just talking to his friends and uh, it's very exciting as a concept. I wanted to, let's see, if I can grab this. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we are on the Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss website. If you go to Products and scroll down, you'll see Interact. This is where we're, we're keeping the information about Streamer. It's under Products, and we have these five different web pages. So we have an introductory page, and on this, you will find a link to the videos, those YouTube videos that Rob mentioned. We talk a little bit about canvassy for students. Obviously, if students have a large language delay or great delays in reading, they're, they're not as good of a candidate for Interact Streamer as a student who has abilities more similar to their class peers. Um, we go through a little bit about the software and microphone trial period and then uh, for assessing the benefit. All of this should be based on data, right? So your teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, preferably, should be working with that student to get some data about how well they're able to listen or what their listening comprehension is just through listening, and then get a, do a, gather some more data for listening comprehension once captioning is available. So that page is for that. I'm going to spend our time just looking at the purchasing page since this is what most people want to see initially. So as we scroll down here, you'll see that we have some different subscriptions to offer and we really are emphasizing that trial period. All of our trials are for $99 and they are for 30 calendar days. $99 for 30 calendar days. And so you can do a trial period with that dual wireless microphone system, which again is about the size of a business card in terms of the receiver, and you get to choose two of the three different kinds of microphones. And so your purchase order or this online purchase you would have would be $99 plus a $500 deposit. If at the end of that 30 days you say, we're going to send back that microphone, then we will refund that full $500 for you, and it only costs you the $99. Similarly, we have the Nano system, which is, again, that very small USB drive receiver and one microphone. And then the other system, uh, excuse me, other, other choice for a trial period is if you have a student with an existing FM or DM system. We are very, very thankful to Phonak, who is right now going around the country doing a tour of their new products. And at, during their presentations, they are mentioning Interact Streamer and how the Phonak equipment can be used and in, integrated with the streamer so that the, the student gets not only great hearing, great listening access, they also get captioning access. So with this, you get the audio cables all, uh, all ready so that you're ready to go and can have, you know, just be ready to go with that FM trial with captioning. And that $99 includes the cost in the shipping of those cables. You can pay us. You can submit a purchase order. We do that all the time. Or you can go online and do the add to cart and pay with your school credit card. So what does Interact Streamer cost for an annual subscription? It's $795. And as Rob pointed out, 
the pricing will be changing. So uh, and we'll be going to more of a month by month um, subscription that will end up being more expensive than this amount, especially if you go and add a second year for only $199, which is really, really a deal. So on this purchase, so I'll jump in here yes. real quick, Karen, just to make sure that people understand. If you start a trial now, we're not going to change the price on you. And mm -hmm. so if you start a trial now, we're going to honor that pricing, even though it may change. So uh, correct. Um, yeah, just, just just letting you know that. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Um, just to go through, you can buy the microphones singly um, after you decide. Yes, we want to do that, and then maybe when uh, classes change in the fall uh, you want to try different microphones we can we have these microphones that you can you can purchase you can get them you know in multiples you can get different headsets and we have price breaks for those as well and here are our cables that are included with that $99 FMDM trial uh, if you need to come back and get more cables we have that as well so I wanted to encourage you right now to get onto the Supporting Success website and step through our different pages, our information on Interact AS, excuse me, Interact Streamer, and uh, certainly take advantage of looking at all of the <clears throat> all of the different guides and, and such we have. Um, that Mike Messini, our uh, our cus customer support um, person, has pulled together. He's done some great, great videos that are short. They're very pointed, and they're very easy to follow. So if we can go back to the very last slides here, um, Rob. Yeah, I had one more. Uh, oh, uh, I had a couple questions, and I just wanted to demonstrate something real quick to people. Um, oh. I'm going to bring up the streamer window again and make this a little bit uh, larger. Uh, but some of the questions we're dealing with, uh, can I change the font size? Can I change the representation? And yeah, you can do that. And so if I come up here to the Chrome settings in the upper right corner and zoom in on the screen, I can make this font size as large as we want. And so if you have a student with some vision issues, we can certainly support that particular situation. I'll make it a little bit smaller here. And then I can also collapse this right column and hide that. So now I've changed, uh, I've, I've given more depth space, if you will, uh, to being able to uh, display it. Okay. And then I can also do things like change the background. So when I do that now, I've just changed it from black text on a very light gray background to yellow text on a dark blue background. So lots of different features that we can do to support the particular needs that a student might have. I'm going to set this back to normal. And I'm going to reduce the font size back to basically where it was, just so we're back to uh, kind of something easier. There we go. We'll stick, I guess, with 125%. That's where it was earlier. And let me get back to the, uh, uh, the PowerPoint slide. All right. Here is the contact information. Karen, why don't you take over again? Sure. Thanks, Rob. Um, Mike Messini, as I said, um, is our support person for schools. Mike has worked extensively with schools, and he has worked with the folks from Phonak, and he has lots of experience in getting the captioning to work successfully with the FM systems. So Mike is a great guy to connect with if you have any questions about using the captioning with a specific student with specific needs. Um, I, again, there's a lot of information already on the videos, um, but he is our guy that, that would be your personal um, go-to guy for just connecting with you to answer these questions. Mike is going to be the one to be sending the follow-up information to you from this webinar. So you'll receive a follow-up email thanking you for attending, and it will have the slides, it will have this recording, and um, it will have information about how to 
uh, get onto the, that demo room. So if you didn't take notes, that's fine. It's all going to come to you tomorrow, probably, if not the next day. And then he can be reached by email or by phone, as you can see there. And the other thing I wanted to offer to you is to, for anyone who is listening, I would be happy to be providing you a one hour or a 1.0 CEU certificate of participation. This only goes for people who are listening right now, not to folks who listen to the recording later. And all you need to do is send me an email at to Karen, K-A-R-E-N, at successforkidswithhearingloss.com. So you can see it's, it's the same thing that happens after the at address right in front of you. Karen at success for kids with hearing loss.com doesn't have to be a fancy email just say CEU certificate and I will return it to you no later than Monday so again this is only available for you to email me between now and the end of tomorrow like 5 p.m. central time tomorrow and I'll be happy to provide you with that CEU certificate just to, with with my thanks for attending and getting this information. We do these webinars monthly, so there will be another one in February, I think February 12th, but I'm not positive at the moment, but it's going to be coming up next month. And so you can certainly forward any of the information that is sent to you by email uh, coming up to someone else, or you can encourage them to attend our next month's webinar. So thanks again. Thanks to you, Rob, for being my co-presenter. Thanks to everyone here for attending. I hope you have a great rest of the day and go in and try captioning for yourself in that demo room. Bye-bye now. <laughs>